Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America. Thank you for joining us on the program. Website, very simple, thisweekinamerica.us. Our guest on the program, Rachelle Myers, was raised in a low-income home, decided early on that she would set a new trend for her family, shattered the curse of poverty. Today, she's CEO of the nonprofit Apples and Oranges that manages over 100 poverty-fighting programs in Texas. Besides providing typical supports like after-school care and nutrition, there are innovative programs that she's working on that teach teens how to launch their own business by showing them how to legally register their own businesses, write a business plan, interact with business professionals, funding, grants, that type of thing. Rachelle is the author of the book, Confined Free from Imprisoned Thoughts, and she's with us on This Week in America. Hi, Rachelle. Welcome to the program. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. It is a fascinating background, and one like so many people, you, you grew up, and, and and things were difficult growing up, but there was love in the family, and that gave you the uh, the impetus to go on, and now you're in charge of, uh, of the nonprofit that I was mentioning. Let's start with the background. In the beginning of the book, it acknowledgments you, you talk about your late father that gave you love and discipline. Let's talk about the discipline aspect of that. How important was that for you to really break free and, and to establish your own path to prosperity? Oh, uh, it was, I did, I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned that I grew up in a loving home in spite of being in a poverty and low income area. But the discipline of, uh, of love, redirecting behavior, and wanting my parents wanting to see me have better due to their uh, background situation, being that they were not able to, to do that, I know that they wanted to see me have, you know, break that curse of poverty. And I really had that ambition at a very, very early age, and I had that instilled it in me. And from there, I just, it, it, it constantly stayed in my mind in school and, you know, just applying for my first jobs. I never wanted to really just work for anyone. But just because they planted that seed, it was the groundbreaking decision that got me to where I am today. And you also mentioned your mother and the fact that she was very supportive and believed in your dreams. And for parents that are listening out there, how important is that where they really understand what their child is saying and they believe in the dreams? And so often maybe we we get busy and we dismiss our children, young children, when they're talking about what they would like to do with their lives. Your mother was very supportive of yours. How important was that to you actually fulfilling those dreams? Yes, yeah, she was very supportive. And I think I was fortunate because my mother was a stay-at-home mom and she really listened to a lot of things that my brother and I had to say. And the fact that she was a great listener, I think is one of the reasons why I could really feel um, her support. It, you know, she didn't brush us off. If we came home, we had a bad day. If anything we wanted to talk about, she was willing to sit down and to listen to everything we had to say. And with that, I think that's very, uh, very important for parents to recognize, um, not to just blow your kids off when they have something they want to say you know, be that, be patient enough to sit down and listen because it's very, very important. And that will carry on with them for the rest of their lives. It's something that I remember now as an adult and thinking back, I'm very, very thankful um, in spite of being in a low income home and my mom not working that um, she was willing to listen and to be very supportive and to encourage us, to give us that encouraging push and encouraging words. And it really motivated me to want better in life. So listen to your, listen to your kids. It's one of the, you know, pointers that um, I, I do tell parents, very important to have that listening ear. The book we're talking about is called Confined Minds Break Free from Imprisoned Thoughts. The author, Rachelle Myers, our guest on This Week in America. Rachelle's website is confinedminds.com. The book is available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, all across the country. Information at her website. And you can link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Uh, it's interesting in the book, and you start off talking about the mind and sort of a, a play on the, the phrase we've all heard, the mind is a terrible thing to waste. Talk about that because everything you discuss in the book, every step that you took along the way from poverty to the success you have today really begins with the mind. Talk about the importance of that. Yes, it's very, very important because today, and I look at a lot of our young people, their, their focus is not on their thought process. It's not on transforming their thoughts. A lot of the focus is on the outside, the fashion with the girls, the makeup, the hair, 
And I think we're with the young people, we're losing focus because we're not focused on their thoughts and what they're thinking and what they're taking in and the things that they're absorbing in their minds. And so in my book, I talk about, you know, people you know, regularly say the mind is a terrible thing to waste. But I say that the mind is a beautiful thing to waste because we hold ourselves back and we drag ourselves down because of the things that we think about. And we have to be, we have, it's very, very important, especially for young people, to watch the type of environment that they're around and, and the type of people they're around, negative people, people who are bringing them down and people who are placing all of these self-imposed limitations upon their, on their thought and their development. Yeah, it's amazing. And the book can find minds break free from imprisoned thoughts. The author, Rachelle Myers, is with us on This Week in America. You talk, we, we get bombarded. I knew it was a number of thoughts every day, but you've got, research shows, what, twenty five to 50,000 thoughts a day, and you really better be able to edit those out, or suddenly you're going to be brought down by those thoughts. Exactly. We have to be very, very mindful of our environment. And one of the things that, on, on a personal level, I had to really break free from a lot of negative people. But the only way that I was able to do that, because I really didn't have control of my environment when I was younger. You know, if mom wanted to take me to to uncle's house or to um, a, a cousin's house, I really didn't have control over that. But where I had control is the things that I got involved in in school. So I would try and step outside of the, that environment, a, a new environment. Per se, I wanted to to just try something different. So you really have to your thought process is going to start by where you are located, your environment, your school, activities you choose to get in. And I chose to join positive um, uh, groups, and I chose to to engage with positive people. And so it's it's pretty much a choice. You know, it's interesting, and one of the very important chapters in the book, Can Find Minds Break Free from Imprisoned Thoughts, is, is the one on disarming the neg- negativity. And we'll talk about the outside influences, but you also talk, and it's something we, we sort of take for granted sometimes, we, we really sort of overlook it, and that's the negativity from within. And you talk about a major source of neg- negativ- negativity that's holding you back is is being afraid to try something. How often do you find you had overcome that in your life, in, in, in the kids that you're working with on a daily basis, where sometimes mm-hmm. it's just, it's the fear of failure that holds us back? Yes, it is. You really, disarming the negativity is, is it's all about what's going on, not with just the people around you, but it's really about yourself. Because sometimes you have to sit back and think, you know, am I, why am I um, so drawn to people that are negative? You know, so you, you really have to think about what you really want in life. So, and what I tell people is really, especially young people, and I refer back to young people because that's my, you know, that's my business, that that is the type of um Um, What am I trying to say here? That's the type of field that I'm I'm passionate about. Right. So so my my main thing is, is don't allow people to easily manipulate you or to exploit you or to be preyed upon because you want to be able to to lift up everything in your body, especially the positive things that you have within you and to just eliminate those negative things and those negative people in those negative environments. And you say it starts at an early age. In fact, you talk about the teenage years where this begins. And so often, I guess, as parents, we're thinking, okay, the negativity that's probably not beginning until they get maybe in the workforce, maybe the last couple of years in college Mm -hmm. when that starts to happen. You're saying, no, it really happens in the teenage years, and it's something we need as parents and as teenagers to be aware of. Yes, you really have to be aware of it. If you if you don't know it's there, then you're not going to right. approach it. But you have to be able to know, you know, pinpoint. Do you do I have low self esteem? Am I do I have depression? Is it is it family issues? Is um, do I not value myself enough? So you have to be able to pinpoint those things and not be afraid of that because we all have weaknesses, just like we all have strengths. So it's it's very important to to pinpoint those weaknesses and work to correct them. 
and to let them know that it's okay that if you have a weak spot. We're all human. We all weak in, in points. But I want them to recognize that it that you know those weaknesses can also be corrected, and you can also strengthen those weaknesses. But you have to be able to do that by setting yourself around positive people, people who believe in your vision, and people who believe in you and your dreams. And you point really? out in the book that this isn't necessarily going to be easy. It's really something what you have to, to work at and something where, I guess, setbacks are, are, are normal. Yes, you have to be able to believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, it's very, very hard to, for you to believe in anything. Believing in yourself is the foundation of breaking free from any negativity, from any self-imposed limitations. So believing in yourself, knowing what you know deep down inside, your talents, your skills, where it can get you in life. Believe in yourself. And what I say to young people is to just, you know, fade out the naysayers. You know, you're going to be around those type of people 24-7. But fade out the naysayers and listen to those people who really believe in you. Because there is just just as there's many negatives, there are so many positives out there. There's so much help. There's so many mentors. There's so many people who want to encourage you and people who want to be your cheerleader and see you make it to the top and to see you accomplish your dreams and goals. One great source is the book we're talking about in the program by the author Rachelle Myers, our guest on This Week in America. The book is Confined Minds, Break Free from Imprisoned Thoughts. Rachelle's website is confinedminds.com. Uh, information, of course, at her website on the book. The book's available Amazon, Barnes & Noble, all around the country. And you can link on directly to Rachel's website by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And and you point out in there, it's very easy with all the neg- negativity, especially if we pay attention to it, that it drowns out our inner voice. And I think all of us have gone through that situation where afterwards yeah. you're thinking, this was not the course I should have taken, and I really knew that. Talk about the inner voice and maybe how sometimes we, we, we should spend more time actually listening to it. Yes, and I would start, what I tell people is to start with setting your standards. There are certain standards that you, you, you have to hold yourself accountable to. Start with setting your standards. Start with clinging to your strengths. Start with avoiding um, a lot of confrontation with people. Uh, know how to walk away when you hear something negative. If, if you're applying for your job, a first job, and someone tells you, oh, if I was you, I wouldn't apply for that job. Someone else uh, with an education, I'm quite sure they're going to give it to them. You know, just give an example, things like that. You don't want to set yourself up um, for failure when you're listening to negative um, uh, feedback from others. So set your standards high, abide yourself by those standards, put something in front of you every day, post something on the wall positive, Uh, create a vision board where you see yourself in the future. Things like that can really, really help and make a big difference. You've got a personal story in the book. In fact, a number of them. Rachelle Myers, our guest on the program. The book we're talking about is Confined Minds, Break Free from Imprisoned Thoughts. The website is confinedminds.com. Book, of course, available at Amazon and Barnes & Noble. And that's overcoming negativity, negative thoughts. It, it happened in your life. You are unemployed, been unemployed for a couple of months. You get a job. You're yeah. all excited. You're going to be a teaching assistant. And then you find out it pays $6.75 an hour your reaction is, I can't get to the phone quick enough to call these people and say they're crazy. I'm not working for that. But your husband points out, wait a minute, it's not all that bad. Are there benefits? And this basically was a job that that started you in the life you're living today. Yes, it does. I tell that testimony everywhere I go because I it really could have been self-destructive yes. what is what I say. Yeah, I got that phone call, uh, 675 an hour. I was like, oh, no. You know, I felt like when I said that, that I was worth more than that. I was like, I'm too educated. I, I already had my own business. I had to close that business down. There's no way I'm going to work for $6.75. But, you know, it's it's very, very um, um fortunate that I have a a great and supportive husband because he pointed out benefits where that never came to my mind. (laughs) And so, yeah, that job actually led me to opening Apples and Oranges because I got a lot of my experience from Head Start. 
a lot of my experience came from that job, and I learned the odds and ends of a nonprofit. I, I went out in the communities helping low-income families, and it felt so rewarding, and I wanted to feel that on a personal level by opening my own business. You know, and, and it's so interesting. Think, yeah, that came out of your initial thought was, as would be the case, $6.75. They're crazy. I'm <laughs> worth more than that. I'm going to hold off for a better job. And suddenly that yes. propelled you to, to, to where you are today when your husband wisely got you to look at the positives of, of the job. Yes, it did. And also, not only that, one of the things that I learned when I was on the job is I got a lot of, um, even the CEO of the company, the vice president of the company, the director of Head Start, they would all come to my desk and personally tell me I had a great report. And I thought, wow, they would, for you to come downstairs and to come to my office and to tell me that I have a, an excellent report, that I'm doing a great job, it, it tells me that I was in a great leader. And it, 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 it just really boosts up my morale to even want to go, you know, even further in life and not just to stay there at that company. I mean, it's a great company, a great organization. I love it. I still support it today. But for myself, I felt like there was more there for me and that I could just break away and get my own company and start something new, start a new trend and to go out and help other people in communities as well and spread the love. Well, that new company, and Rachelle is the CEO of the nonprofit Apples and Oranges, managing over 100 poverty-fighting programs in Texas. The book we're discussing is Confined Minds, Break Free from Imprisoned Thoughts. Rachelle Myers, our guest on the program, our website, confinedminds.com. Information at our website, thisweekinamerica.us. A couple minutes left in the program, and something you mentioned in there, which I think is, is often overlooked, and you're talking about transforming your thinking, and that's once we... We disarm the negativity or we do the best we can, or at least we have the negativity under control because there's so many negative situations and people out there. Once, we're, once we do that and we're trying to transform our thinking, you talk about the importance of having fun. And sometimes we think that having fun is sort of a distraction. We should be focused on work <laughs> and what we expect to accomplish. And you're saying we really right. need to have fun because what, it, it clears the mind and all of a sudden uh, our whole personality has changed. Yes. Yes, having fun is the point of your career, the point. I mean, if you love what you're doing, you're automatically going to have fun. But I also say you have to be able to, if you're not having fun, you need to be able to forgive others because a lot of people hold on to a lot of hurt, a lot of baggage, a lot of past experiences, and it prevents them from having fun in their life. It prevents them from living their life to the fullest. So be able to to forgive others who hurt you and, and, and start the process of healing. Once you can heal that and, and refresh yourself, um, I really, really feel that you can really have fun in life. Fun is not a distraction. Fun is living your dream and knowing what you knowing you have that passion to do what you were made to do and to do what you were created to do. It's interesting. So it's okay to yeah, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's uh, it's okay to have fun. It's okay to laugh. It's okay to enjoy yourself. You'll find all this yeah. information in the book, Confined Minds, Break Free from Imprisoned Thoughts. Rachel Myers, our guest on the program. And if you're thinking, yeah, but I'm a little older, I've, I, I've, I've missed those chances. That train has left the station. There's not a whole lot I can do about it. You say, basically, you can win back the dreams you thought you lost. So it's really not too late, is it? No, it's not too late. Listen, I, I'm not afraid to say my age. I'm 44 years old. I broke into apples and oranges um, eight years ago. So it gives you an idea of how old I was. It's never too late to start. I, this is my first book, and I'm currently working on my second and third book. Never too late. So I would say to people who is in their 40s or mid-40s or even their 50s or 60s, it is never too late to, to live your passion. What, those dreams that you thought had fallen by the wayside, you can pick them up and start on those dreams. It's never too late to do that. I thought I would never be able to write my book, but I had to buckle down and sacrifice and realize, you know, this is something that I really need to do. It's not for me. It's to be a to, to really be a help and a blessing to someone else out there who may need this message. 
And so I had to really sacrifice and sit down and write this book so that this message could get out to be a healing to someone else and to the minds of young people today. Not to oversimplify, but does it start when we take control of our lives, when we decide we are going to write the narrative of our life, we're not going to let somebody else dictate that for us? Correct. I have to agree with that. You know, don't let anyone else dictate your life. One of the things that I mentioned is to pursue your own visions and not the visions of others. You know, some people, they'll tell you what they think you're good at doing or they'll tell you what they think you might um, want to be in life. Even as a, a young person, we have I have parents who tell telling their kids, hey, I think you're going to be a good attorney or you're going to be a doctor when this kid is looking like mom or dad, that's not me. So, you know, pursue your own dreams. You know you better than anyone else. You know what you want to do. You know your gifts. You know your talents. You know the skills that you possess. So don't worry about the vision of others and the expectations that others have for you. You know, focus on you and focus on what you think is best for you. It is a highly relatable book, especially given the uh, the circumstances of Rachel coming from a low income and loving family, decided that she was going to start a, a, a new trend in the family and shatter that curse of poverty. She's now actually mentoring literally thousands of youngsters in the Texas in, in Texas. The book is Confined right. Minds, Break Free from Imprisoned Thoughts. Again, Rachel's website is confinedminds.com. Books available Amazon, Barnes & Noble, all across the country. Information at our website thisweekinamerica.us and you can link on directly to Rachel's website. Rachel Myers, our guest on the program. We will have her back. Rachel, a fascinating book. Thank you so much for being with us on the program. I've enjoyed it. Thank oh. you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Have a good day. You're listening to This Week in America. Information at our website, thisweekinamerica.us.